Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is the Goodness of God series. We are on day 15 of our series. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much that you create every day, every sunrise, every sunset as a symbol of your love for the world to see that you are good, for the world to see that you are merciful and compassionate and that you love us with so much beauty and so much grace. And this morning I would like to read Psalm 46, one through two, verse seven and verse 10. And it reads, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Be still and know that I am God. God, you are our fortress. That place we go to hide from the world, a place we know that we will be accepted and loved. You are our refuge from the uncertainties of this world, our refuge, our safe place, where we have a father that we can be sure without a shadow of a doubt that he wants the best for us. You are not a taskmaster, a tormentor, or an evildoer wanting to punish us. You are good. Father, you are not unreasonable. In you we find truth and light. We will never be judged unfairly, always strong, always tender, always embracing when you speak your truth. You are our strength, O oh God, for a new day. You teach us how to fight and how to war against the evil one. Our biggest defense is our obedience, O oh God. That is our shield and our defense. You give us the strength for another day. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Yes, our Father in heaven, who can we call? Who do we have on this earth? Who can with, we trust with our greatest good? Only you, O oh God. Only you we can trust fully. You are faithful in the good times and in the bad times. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. The Lord of heaven's armies are among us. What a gift, Father, to have the greatest warrior on our side defending and protecting us the greatest strategist on the planet, never loses a battle, always comes back with the head of our enemy and says, see, I have defeated him once again on your behalf. You are the greatest devil slayer, O God. The God of Israel is our fortress, our father. And in you, we can place our complete trust we will be still and know your goodness. We will be still and know that you are God, the God that keeps us, protects us, and provides for all of our needs. When we need your providence, which is always and forever. Thank you, Father God, for being wonderful God 
a counselor, a mighty God. We love you. And we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your allegiance. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you never change. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we can trust that everything around us is changing. The world is changing. The world is becoming darker by the day. But your light never changes. Your goodness never changes. Your love never changes. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we can trust that. Thank you, O oh God, in Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy, I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy and yet it is so powerful. So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God. Welcome to the Goodness of God series. We are on day 15, and the name of our devotional today is God is Not the Problem. Actually, the book of Jeremiah will amaze you with the wonderful picture it gives of just how long-suffering God truly is. In Jeremiah's day, the Israelites were totally rebellious towards God. They spurned him. They talked badly about him. Though they gave him no honor, he kept giving them time to repent. He sent them a prophet who went to them day and night, warning them and urging them to turn back to the Lord. That prophet, Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord has come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but yet you are not obeying. And the Lord has sent you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not 
heard, you have not inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn to God now every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings and dwell in the land the Lord has given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me to anger with the work of your hands. I will do you no hurt. And yet you have not obeyed me, said the Lord. Jeremiah 25, 3 through 7. Although, although Jeremiah was faithful, his patience was not as enduring as the Lord, and he grew tired of his job. He was fed up with the people because they wouldn't listen. They were always mad at him. He would tell them the word of the Lord, and they would put him in prison and try to kill him. He was not appreciated. Some ministers today think that they have it bad. Most of them haven't had to endure anything like Jeremiah did. Finally, Jeremiah said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm through. Now, you would think God would agree with him. You would think God would say, okay, Jeremiah, it's been 38 years now, and these people haven't done one thing I've asked them to do. You can go elsewhere. But God didn't say that. He was still reaching out to his people. He still wanted to give them an opportunity to change. He moved on, Jeremiah, making his word like a fire shut up in his bones so that he was compelled to keep preaching. Even then, do you know what they did? The Bible says they turned their backs towards God and not their faces. They answered Jeremiah saying, as for the word that you have spoken us in the name of the Lord, we will not obey you, but we will certainly do whatever we want going forth out of our mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. Jeremiah 44, 16 and 17. The queen of heaven, those idols made by men and women, made by human hands, the symbols of the new age, things that we are seeing today, the worshiping of angels, the worshiping of the queen of heaven is still going on today. And God promised them that they could possess their land, prosper and have days of heaven and earth if they would just do what he said. Deuteronomy 11:21. He will his will was for them to obey him so that he could be so that he could bless them. He had warned them that if they didn't turn from their wicked ways, the Babylonians would come, kill many of them, and take the rest into captivity. God did not want that to happen. That is why he warned them about it for 40 years. Yet they said, we don't want to obey you, God. We want to worship other gods. We want to be like the heathen and bake cakes to the queen of heaven. They made the wrong choice. Finally, their time was up. And just as God said, the Babylonian army came against them. Still, God did not turn his back on them. He tried to help them even then. In essence, he said, okay, though you rejected my first plan for you, I have a second plan. If you will give yourself over to the enemy and willingly submit to them, I will preserve you and I will bless you even in your captivity. But if you do not, you're going to die. Of course, most of them did not do what the Lord said, so they died. You might be thinking, well, that was in Jeremiah's day. What does that have to do with us today? It has everything to do with us because the principles of God are still the same. If we want to live in peace, we need to do what God says. When the Israelites went into captivity, they probably blamed God for it. They probably said, God did to us, did this to us. He's the problem. But God was not Israel's problem. He was Israel's answer. The problem was that when he told them what to do, they would not do it. 
and that is still the problem today. He tells people what to do, and they won't do it. If we obey him, we could enjoy good days. If we could have days of heaven on earth, if only we would follow God and follow him with an undivided heart, follow him steadfastly, unashamed of the gospel, knowing that God is God and that his proof, the proof of God is all around us. Once we join in the family of God, trusting in Jesus, we don't ever have to have a bad day. If we have a bad day, we have missed something somewhere because God has made a provision for us to enjoy his blessings, for us to enjoy the beauty of the world, the beauty of a sunrise, the beauty of a sunset, the smile of your children, the love of your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, the love of your friends. And so most likely it's because we have not spent enough time with God to hear what he has to say about our present situation or even about us. Because when you sit in the presence of God and you are still and you let him be God, he will tell you, he will show you, he will love on you like you've never been loved. My friend, how can we have bad days on earth when we have a God like our God that does wonderful and wondrous things in our lives? We are to be so grateful and so thankful and enjoy each and every day as the last day, connecting with other people, loving on them, telling them that we love them. We are to be serving others so we get out of ourselves and we stop being self-centered and we start being Christ-centered. As we become Christ-centered, we are going to find and we are going to feel and experience the joy. It is not a fleeting thing. It is not a fantasy. It is a real experience that we can have. The abundance, the fullness, until it overflows John 10, 10 in the Amplified Bible. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. God wants us to enjoy our life. God wants us to enjoy him and his goodness for us. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Father, for this word, my God. Thank you so much for your beautiful words, my God, the beauty that is all around us, the beauty that is in you, my God, the beauty that is in us, oh God. We just have to peel back the layers, my God, the layers of wrong thinking, the layers, my Father, of anger, the layers, my God, of sadness and bitterness and unforgiveness, those layers, my Father, of depression and despair, the layers, my God, and joy is all the way down at the bottom, my God. But we have to peel the layers in order to find the treasure. Thank you, O oh God, for blessing each and every one of my subscribers. Thank you for blessing them, my God with your knowledge, my God, so that they may grow, my God, and mature to the stature of you. And I pray that for all of us, as we are all growing, this is a journey. None of us have arrived. None of us know more than anyone else. We, we are still learning. We are learning so much from you every single day, my Father, my God. And we boast on you and not on ourselves. We boast in the, in the wonderfulness, in the wondrous of your love and of your, my Father, the wondrous acts that you do, O oh God. 
that only you can do. And we say thank you. We, we are grateful, my God, for everything that you have done. In Jesus' name, amen.